Welcome back to No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Again. We're still going through the CIA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, uh, Corporation of Inane... No, it's the actual CIA. Wait, really? Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> what business do we have in the CIA? The, That's something to do with the Death Drive. The CIA, as dramatized in Japanese anime, is always not very good. The CIA isn't good in real life. <laughs> I was gonna no, say I mean, not good in real life. no, I mean, like, they don't write it well. Uh, that that kind of not very good. Well, whoever's oh. writing the CIA in real life is also not writing them very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the CIA in real life is run by humans, presumably, so there are, you know, <laughs> you discernible human <laughs> motivations behind everything they do, whether stupid or not. Yeah, but, but real, if you look at the script for real life, it fucking blows, man, all right? Like... What it took them how long? Uh, how long to finish fighting those wars in France and Britain? That arc went on for like what three hundred years? Give me a break! Come on, come up with some new content, people, please. Basically, what I'm saying is that because Japan's doesn't because Japan has interaction with like the FBI and the CIA, they tend to write them into a fair number of stories, but they never seem to do well, possibly because they don't have as easy a time researching the specifics as we do. I mean, that's partially just a language barrier thing. Yeah. I mean, I try to research things and organizations and social issues that are specific to Japan occasionally, and it's, 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 it's hard, man. <laughs> it's annoyingly difficult to, to to get that information when you live in the West. Yeah, because it's all in Japanese. Cue the bo 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 Well, it's... There's... It's not all in Japanese, but it's extremely difficult to discern which English sources have accurate information and which are translations of a translation of a translation. Uh, so... Yeah... So I'm assuming that it's accurate how many giant skulls there are in the CIA, though. Like, th Probably. this seems about about right. You know, maybe a little bit on the, 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 they were, you know, trying to be conservative with the amount of giant floating skulls. So there might be a few more in the real thing. But I think they, they ballparked it pretty good. The, the glowing blue plan will still open gates. I mean, that's one to one. So, Oh, you've which... been in there, John? No. <laughs> oh. So, uh... Wait, <sighs> Ryan. <laughs> so which of so which of the giant virtual skulls is the AI that runs Bill O'Reilly? Uh, I thought he I thought he left. I thought he retired. No, that was like that is that that doesn't stop him from making shitty comments online as they uh, tend to do. Shitty comments okay. online, also books. I was gonna say, w w would that necessarily be the giant skull in the CIA's fault though? If well, according like to loose, DMC like, Devil May Cry, absolutely. Rogue. Oh, okay. <laughs> you remember that boss, right? <laughs> I remember the Fox News satire, yeah. Yeah, who was a yeah, giant floating head boss. <laughs> oh, I don't remember much of that game besides fuck you. There's there's a short level where you play through the Raptor News Network logo, as in you play through the actual logo, and then the um, and then you fight the giant Bill O'Reilly face. <laughs> uh, that game was a trip Not a fun one, but it was a trip Did you just, like, force stab that guy from a mile away? Uh, functionally, yes Okay Time for more Hotline Miami Oh, so this is just a repeated thing Yep Seeing Travis's face in Hotline Miami sprite form, though is just bizarre. Yes, it is. What? That that was short. Those weren't there before. And now they are. The dead bodies on the ground is a Hotline Miami thing as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm wondering if there's a point to it, though, besides visual homage. Mm. Because assuming you never played Hotline Miami, you have no idea what the fuck's going on. It gives the impression that you're following the character he was just talking to. Yeah. 
I was like, what the hell's the point? Because uh, you don't, uh, this you don't like really fight those kind of things now. You're just fighting the regular enemies. Like, I mean, if you if the, like the environment changed to look like hi Hotline Miami. Yeah, then that makes sense. It doesn't, though. Well, you said that the original idea was that you would, like, that Travis would, like, jump into random indie games and play them, right? And, like, you would play them yes. but as No More. That, I mean, I'm sure that's a legal nightmare. But I, I mean, that was part of the reason why they scrapped it so early, and that's why they're basically just relegated to t-shirts. So. But I think, like, it could have been, like, I think it would have done a long way to, I don't know, like, be more specific with the humor. Because they were able to poke fun at, like, some general video game tropes. But, you know, like, oh, like, crappy CG PS1 game and, you know, stuff like that. But Setting I feel like being able to poke fun at actual real games would be neat, especially since if they were actually those real games instead of, and not being like Schmottline, Schmiami, it would have felt uh, like playful as opposed to Mean Spirited, this game sucks. The, uh, the other thing, though, is that um, depending on the game, the brand might not want to be associated with the kind of humor that No More Heroes has going for it. That's that is true, a, yes. That is always a thing. But that's why say. you do your research, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think that, from a marketing perspective, I don't think uh, Shovel Knight, for example, wants to be associated with Travis Touchdown's Potty Mouth. Um, oh, yeah, and I'm sure that they probably wouldn't go with Travis Touchdown. It would be games more in line with Hot yeah, Night uh, 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 or... And to clarify for the audience, I'm not saying that, like, the creators of Shovel Knight necessarily hate No More Heroes. They could love it. But they, but from a marketing standpoint, you, you don't want a good-natured cartoon adventure game to be associated with this guy who jerks off his lightsaber every 20 seconds, you know? Um, I got my wires crossed, and when Ted was saying that, I'm sure they wouldn't have any I, no problem cross crossing over with Hotline Miami. I thought you were talking about Shovel Knight. Oh, yeah, you know, you just see Shovel Knight <laughs> yeah. smacking somebody with a shovel, and then their Do you head remember, actually pops you know, my off. Favorite, my favorite villain was Coke Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what he does? <laughs> he drinks I, He drinks Coke. I mean, there, <laughs> there's a reason. Yeah, exactly. What did you think I was going to say? There's a reason that when Bayonetta arrived in Smash... They didn't do a whole bunch of cutscenes of her doing sexy shenanigans. Because, I'm surprised like, they did as much as they did with Bayonetta. Yeah, uh, because Bayonetta is like... Wh it's also that Japan is just really weird on what they'll censor and what they won't. Well, there's that, but Bayonetta is also, like, tonally very strange next to the rest of the Smash cast. Like, more so than any other character in the roster. So I'm surprised she even got in. Well, she apparently <laughs> won the. She probably wouldn't have gone in if it wasn't for that poll. Uh, like the yeah, most likely. Because uh, she was the. Because she won the character poll out of characters that were eligible, aka not Shrek or SpongeBob or Goku. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, I also wouldn't be surprised if another video game character got above her, but they just couldn't legally make it work. Yeah. So it's like, um, uh, but speaking tonally, Bayonetta, like you would have an easier time fitting the fitting Dante shenanigans into Smash than you would Bayonetta shenanigans. I don't know. He says fuck a lot. So does Bayonetta, wrong Dante. Though. Wrong Dante. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were talking about the other Dante. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking Can about. Can you imagine Dante? that yeah. though? Like DMC Smash Brothers crossover, I, with the Fox I, News background, the giant head. I can slightly imagine it since they put that Dante into the Sony Smash game. Ugh. Which was weird. Why? No, it's not weird. They're just marketing DMC. <laughs> yeah. Why that, doesn't mean you you don't, that doesn't mean you have to agree with it, though. Why would you ever do that? <laughs> uh, you know what? It's This is just reminding me of during the, the week before the Byleth uh, DLC announcement. Everybody was expecting it to be Devil May Cry. And because the DMC Twitter said, you should be excited about something on Thursday, which was the day of the Direct, and everybody was like, does this mean that Dante's in Smash? We should also point out that this is the same uh, fan base who, when they saw Shantae's uh, window, 
in the Shantae opening movie where it just happened to have two beams of wood <laughs> crossing in the middle that's slightly off skew. Is Shantae going to be in Smash Brother? Guys, guys, come on. Guys, <laughs> guys no. Sakurai um, did not arrange I want, his chairs I, I want Dante, to say that Waluigi is going to be in Smash Brothers. I want, I want Dante to be in Smash Brothers just so I can I, see all the all, all general audience saying, oh, another fucking sword user. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dante wouldn't just be a sword user, though. He'd be an everything user. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, uh, folks won't know that outside fans. <laughs> you know, they'll likely show the sword first before they, they show, like, like, form shifts and shit. Yeah, I suppose. And you know, he'll have a special meter because every fucking DLC character has to have one of those, and it'd be double trigger. Yeah, it would be. No, double trigger would probably be his final smash or something, I guess. No, I don't know because if they gave um, the persona, his final smash would have to be to sin Joker. double trigger, actually. I, I, although, to, although we may well, we may know by the time this comes out because I guess the um, the card purchase for Pass Two is coming out in a few weeks in Japan. Which last time when they did that for Pass One, it was the same day Joker got revealed. Ah, uh, so. I still haven't bought Pass 2, and I'm not going to be able to for a little while, unfortunately. But, you that's know, actually, I mean, there's no rush. It sounds like it's coming out. I should so. really work on unlocking the rest of the non-DLC roster, <laughs> because I haven't finished that yet. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fine, though, because a lot of people were mad that, oh, Nintendo wasted my money because I bought the, the Pass before knowing Byleth was character... Maybe you shouldn't buy... A product you don't know you will like. Maybe. Just gonna did, throw did, that did, out there. Did you not like the other characters in the past, people? Yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> the the Fighter's Pass only saves you money if you were going to get all five characters anyway. So, yeah. actually, I don't think it which saves I, you which money I mean at I'm all, no do, matter so. what. No, it does. It does? It does. It's, okay. it's $5. Yeah, uh, okay. $5. <laughs> One character's worth of money, I think. I mean, five five bucks is five bucks. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, yeah. you, you bought, always, a, you you bought a product wait. specifically not knowing what was going to be the last character. I mean, so... Yeah, you could always wait and buy them like $10 at a time. It's $10, right? Uh... No, they're $6. They're, uh, I think they're like $6. Okay. Five, six bucks, six dollars. Yeah, I mean, you'll spend five more dollars, but you also won't be spending that money at one time. I get the fighter's pass because I just don't care. I want all the characters whether I like them or not. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to get them all anyway, so yeah, five bucks is five like, bucks is but, but, the, but, I, but I'm also doing videos on YouTube about video games, so I have a different motivation for getting all the characters than most other people. So that's me. Um, Lewis, you said you haven't unlocked all the characters, right? You want to know what's the most fun and rewarding way to do that? Unlock them all by playing World of Light mode. No. Ugh. <laughs> what? You World aren't of Light going to mode. enjoy this massive and epic single-player adventure. World of Light mode is everything bad about uh, about Brawl's story mode, minus everything good, but with more bad piled on top of it. So I'm not going to touch that with a ten-foot pole. Uh, let's see. More. Yeah, but don't you want to punch Pauline in the face? Of all the, I do. Of all the indie games to actually make it in, why did it have to be the one I don't give a fuck about? I just wish that they would have gone more and done more with it if it was going to be in the game in the first place. Like, cause this looks more like a Pac-Man reference than a Hotline Miami reference right now. Well, I mean, it's not, it's it's not necessarily even a Hotline Miami reference. <laughs> it's just how the game's structured. No more heroes, maze madness. <laughs> I think I mean, Pac-Man and da uh, Dante, Travis Touchdown would probably get along. Like, I mean, Pac-Man's murdered a couple of dudes in his life. No, they're already dead. How do you think they he got makes them dead, deader. John? No, I see. I don't think. I don't think we need an origin story of Pac-Man's ghosts. Pac-Man Act Zero. We kind of like have several conflicting backgrounds for the ghosts by this point, I think. Like, there was that witch. But there are also other things. Talkman. Uh. The Pac-Man lore is incredibly deep. And no, it's not. <laughs> it's just weird. 
And there are several continuities, and I'm not sure where they begin or end. Uh, obviously, the old 1980s uh, TV show is the best continuity. No, obviously. Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures. Ugh, I hate that game with a passion. <laughs> Just record it already. Conquer your fears. It's kind of a point-and-click. No, it, t t Ted, it's only the second most hated game I've had in my in my childhood. It, it's kind of like number one. For what it is, Roadrunner Death Valley Rally. For what oh, it is, that game. game is functional. <laughs> like if you enjoy point-and-click adventure games, you might enjoy Pac-Man 2. Um, but it's weird. Yeah, but no, Death Valley Rally is my least favorite game from my childhood of all time. Recording, Eesh. do it. No, oh, damn. I don't blame him. <laughs> so if you touch the re if you touch the yellow buttons, you get teleported back to the start. Yep. And you have to face a horde of enemies. I mean, not like they're hard. It's all the really weak ones. If, if anything, it's a good way to grind money. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just a confined area. And they're, for the most part, the weak ones, so... Until they start spawning these things in. No, those are the suicide bombers that you just hit twice and they're oh, dead. Oh, okay. I'll tell you, though... I have the intentions of going back to No More Heroes because 3 is on the way. And I have to say that I'm not really looking forward to this. Because this commentary has shown me... I mean, the dialogue and stuff is great. Like, I love the bits where uh, we got character exchanges and all that. But gameplay, it's it's it seems awfully tedious. And very repetitive. Kind of, but I mean, there's also a co-op, so you might want to get some footage of that and see how that might change the experience. Hey, let me just call my invisible friend. You have friends. You you have friends and you have a brother. Yeah, it was easier years ago. <laughs> like everybody lives in freaking Philadelphia now. Like you've got Elliot, Sabrina, Caro. Um, they live with at least one other person who I don't remember at the moment. You got Matt. You got Mark, Steve, uh, Celine. Uh, Greg. Greg. You know people in real life. People have different schedules. That is true, yes. <laughs> Wait, does the layout change depending on which door you walk through? Yes. Oh. I mean... I mean, there's, all, there, there's only one path to the end, so it's not a big deal. You're just getting extra stuff if you go down the other paths. Oh, I see. I think I get what you mean, John, in that this looks like effectively a very gauntlet kind of game, but... Yeah, which we know. established, like, in part one. But... I don't know. It's it just, like, I know it's a side game. It's, it's to some capacity. And there are things to enjoy. It's just that I... I, I feel now I'd be playing this just to say I did, and because it's part of the No More Heroes mythos. I'm not super into this style of play. At the same time, I can see things here that I'm sure people who are into this style of play would really enjoy. So, while I'm not super excited to play it, while I wasn't really super into No More Heroes to begin with, to, to be honest, I can certainly see other people really liking it. Uh, the, the blow is softened, though, I think it's because we know for a fact we have a third entry coming. It's also in not... Series. Despite what the uh, part total tells you, it's not a super long game if you don't care about getting everything. Yeah. That's so true. I mean, I mean, I mean, part part of it is just I'm going for 100, percent and right. if you don't necessarily care about that, it's probably cut down a few hours of time. It is a very arcadey game. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I do like a good arcade kind of style game, and I should also mention I think that arcade style games can work with longer story beats or more involved story beats because. Um, talking about games we haven't done on the channel in forever um trauma center is uh i love that series and it is effectively in terms of gameplay like it's a it's a surgery simulator simulator with giant quotation marks but effectively it's like an arcade game where you just have weird motion controls and you do surgery you know that's it but that game is also lots of dialogue you, you, and story you, and stuff. you probably would see a game like that in a japanese arcade yeah um yeah, so it's like and i i mean as long as the story itself is good then you know i enjoy reading slash listening slash 
just experiencing it. So I don't think that having a good story and having an arcade gameplay base don't necessarily have to, you know, be at odds with each other. I guess it just depends on how much fun you find that arcade gameplay base to be and how satisfying Yeah, that is definitely is. a case-by-case -case basis. The thing yeah. about these... Normally, I like my arcade games to be in short bursts. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing about these, like, quick, simple arcade games, though, is that they generally appeal to people who just want to keep playing. Yeah, um, um, I guess that is also true, but I guess the point that John made is, is that arcade games being in quick bursts, I think having the longer story beats helps with that a little bit because that means there's more breaks between the gameplay so it doesn't get repetitive as quick. In theory, that makes sense, but uh, um, John, you remember some of the things you said about the story in Freedom Planet, right? Yes. Yeah, and one of those things was that uh, quite a lot of the time it tended to go on for a while. Yeah, in a that, 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 that game had horrible pacing. Yeah, in a different style of game, the pacing might not have felt so odd, um, is, the, is the sense that I got when I was watching that review. Would you say so? I, it, it, Freedom Planet was two things. One I didn't elaborate on as much, much on is, one, the pacing was awful, and two, the story... I mean, while enjoyable, it wasn't exactly my cup of tea. If it was something like No More Heroes, I you know that, that where the humor is a little more of my flavor, then it probably wouldn't be as bad. But my my main problem was with the pacing. Mm. You know, you're playing a fucking well, then again, Freedom Planet's level is pretty long. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you've ever played a Sonic game before, uh, but still, you you play like a five minute level, and you're, there's 13 minutes of cutscenes, and it's like Jesus Christ, what the fuck. <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk more about the uh, cutscene ratio that we've had in this game as well next time on No More Heroes.